Attention, this is a matter of national security. After a meteorite crashed into the New Jersey Turnpike, the following digital audio transmission from the You Watch I Listen podcast was intercepted by NASA scientists in the year 2019. The You Watch I Listen podcast is about to start. Sit down, listen close, and try not to die. The You Watch I Listen podcast starts now. Um, welcome to week nine of our NFL picks. Um, going into last week, uh, we were separated by three games in total. And coming into this week, it is still three games in total because we each went 12 and three, amazingly enough. Yeah. Um, so as it stands right now, Josh is in first place at 75, 44 and one. I'm in second place at 74, 45 and one. And Taylor is in third place at 72, 48 and one. Um, so no real, real big trades in the NFL this week, um, like many were expecting. Uh, the biggest one was probably Leonard Williams from the Jets to the Giants. Uh, Dude, I'm going to tell you Giants fans now, that's a bonehead move on your part because you could have gotten him for uh, just in free agency this offseason without giving up draft capital. Now you might not even re-sign him, and he's not that good. He's okay. He's decent. He's average a serviceable he, player. He's average where he was picked. I mean, he does his job. No, well, he's below it, average based on where he was picked. No, Six overall and no, only has 15 that. sacks in his career. No, I'm saying like as far as being like, like he, if he was drafted in the second round, it's fine. If he's drafted in the, not even second, I would say for that production, to give him a third round pick. If he was a fourth round pick, worth it. But he has not been a difference maker. And he was playing with a pro bowler and Muhammad Wilkerson next to him at one point. Sheldon and Richardson Sheldon next Richardson, to him. Yeah. And he couldn't do shit. And his he, most sacks he has in his career in a season is seven. And he was supposed to be this transcendent pass rusher. He's turned into a decent pass rusher with very limited run stuffing abilities. So don't think that you got some guy that's going to make a huge deal. If you resign him, it's great. And you better not resign him for more than 10 million a year. And you probably will because Dave Gettleman doesn't know what he's doing. Um, Akib Talib went to the Dolphins. They basically traded for him in a salary dump and got a fifth round pick out of it. Um, and what uh, Kenyon Drake went to the Arizona Cardinals for another fifth round pick. Um, was that really? Was that about it? There the wasn't really trades? anything else. I tell you right now, man. I was I was so certain Jamal Adams was getting moved. I really was, just because uh, like the, the Cowboys made he, such a late push. I have a lot of credit for Joe. Apparently, Al- the uh, Ravens came closer than the Cowboys. Really, the Ravens were closer than the Cowboys. How was like I didn't even hear about the yeah, Ravens. Yeah, I imagine if they team. had <laughs> Earl Thomas, Jamal, Jamal Adams. Adams, and I'm going to say this as well. Jamal Adams is a good player. He's not a great player. I'm not, too many, that's fair. He's too many personal fouls he's, all the time. Um, he's, he's a really good. He's basically Rashad Jones on the Dolphins. Maybe not even that good. Rashad Jones was an All Pro. He's uh, he's he's got he has a lot of upside. He's Jabril he has, Wilson. He, no, stop it. <laughs> but uh, I, I I don't see Jamal Adams being a Jet. It's just we, no. We, he, he, not now. Said not because, after those tweets. And well, he's 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 on tweet on Twitter liking tweets that are bashing Sam Darnold. Yep. Like what are you doing, dude? Well, because stop. It, he, he's he's a very he's a very emotional guy, which I I understand now. Like, Let's, let's be an adult. Like, like, let's get your emotions in check. But he's also a very loyal guy. So I understand where he's coming from. He feels betrayed. The fact but he is a business shop, and you got to get over it. I mean, you also have to remember something that, like, this is all like he's what ten and twenty seven since he came into the league. He's tired of losing. Yeah, coming from a winning program in LSU. So I, I do understand his frustration. But there's times to be a kid. There's times to be a pro. Yeah. Um. And if he would have handled it with grace, it would have been much different. You can't obviously. go on Twitter bashing people, man. It doesn't yo, work wait, like wait, that. Wait, uh, that's <laughs> some Lonzo ball shit. He literally no. That, that's Levar ball shit. Mm, it's it's, made it's tomato. literally Lonzo was quiet during almost all of that. Yeah. But. Uh, Dude, when he goes on Twitter and he goes, Joe Douglas is a liar, you just straight up called your GM a liar on Twitter. I'm also going to tell you, your GM would be a dumbass if he didn't listen to any calls he got. So, yeah. I mean, you're supposed to. I mean, listen, it's a GM's job to listen to calls on any offer, and he'd be a fool if he didn't. I fought with you adamantly that they weren't going to trade Chris Harris, that Denver was not going to trade Chris Harris. They almost did. And to the Lions, yeah, yeah. They almost did it, but then they almost traded Darius Slay, and then they're like, why would we do that? Yeah, exactly. Um, But, you know, it it was a very uneventful trade deadline. 
headline. Um, ultimately, a lot of hype, but nothing really happened. I tell you what, though, man. I, even though there's a lot of hype, like there's a lot of like we only deal in the last three hours of like between uh, yeah, between it was a lot of lot of clock. basically in baseball terms, it was hot stove it, talk. It's, hot stove. The trade deadlines become one. The trade deadline and draft day have become honestly like my favorite. Well, draft times. day has always been awesome, but NFL trade deadline. I'm like the biggest move I remember a few years ago was that the Dolphins traded Chris Chambers to the fucking Chargers. The guys usually don't move in the NFL draft until the last few years. Yeah. Well, and then uh, didn't didn't Champ Bailey and Clinton Porsche get traded at the deadline too? Was it the deadline? I'm almost I, positive. I thought it was but, a little but, but bit that before. was a huge one. Yeah. All right. Why don't we get into this week's picks uh, again? Three games separate us. Um, so first Thursday night, uh, Halloween night, the San Francisco, the undefeated San Francisco 49ers at the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, 49ers with a dominating statement victory over the Carolina Panthers. Told you, Bob. Um, and the Cardinals coming off a blowout loss to a returning Drew Brees. Um, 49ers nine and a half point favorites on the road on Thursday night. Uh, Josh, you're the leader uh, on the standings, so why don't you give us your pick first? Uh, yeah, 49ers. 49ers, okay. Uh, Taylor? San Francisco and San Francisco to cover nine and a half. Yeah, um, I'm also taking the 49ers. Uh, I'm not going to... I. I, I'm not as comfortable with them to cover uh, Thursday night road short week coming off uh, a victory that may have been their best win of the year. That's where that territory yeah. where I could see them playing a little sloppy. So, you know, Tevin Coleman, four touchdowns. Man. Yeah, how, yeah. How great has he looked? He's, he's been fa- Tevin Coleman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big fan of Tevin well, Coleman. Uh, wh- wh- why did you like him? Oh, he actually used to be on the Atlanta Falcons. And how are they do without really him? Good oh, they're not doing great. They're <laughs> the 29th run, uh, ranked run offense in oh, the league. And who did they pay over uh, Tevin Coleman? Devontae that would be Devonte Freeman. Oh, got it. Okay. I don't think um, he's that. The, the next game is... No, he's, he's good. No, no, I'm saying he's like... Kevin he, Coleman or Devontae Freeman? No, no, Devontae Coleman. Uh, Devontae he Freeman. was good until he got hurt. Yeah. He well, that's what I'm, I don't know, I'm saying. He'll probably like, be better next year, a year after the like, injury. Like, when he was part of a one-two combo, he's doing, that's he's when he was He's doing well as a receiver out of the backfield. But he's just... No he, running lanes. Yeah. Which is what right, they need. Uh, next game is the Houston Texans at the Jacksonville Jaguars in London. Uh, Houston with a dramatic last-second victory. The the play of the year, possibly, from Deshaun Watson in the end of the fourth quarter with his eyes closed, passing it to his tight end. Jacksonville coming off a victory over the Jets. Uh, very, very fun victory for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Quaz um, screaming all day uh, Sunday because the Jets couldn't cover for his parlay. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, congrats, Quad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, uh, who do you got in this game? Uh, I have Jacksonville. Okay. Um, even though I really, really, really like Houston, I like I like. They've how been very... It's just too inconsistent, and I honestly think that um, Jacksonville's defense can really get to Deshaun Watson and yeah. bring him down for once. Sure. Um, so it's just a matter of that happening and a matter of Deshaun Watson. Just He's going to make a mistake. He always does in big games. Sure. I mean, Houston's better off without him than they are with him. I mean, they always every time Houston loses, it's by a touchdown or less. They, ne- they haven't lost by double Correct. digits since in, he's taken over in, the starting yeah, job. Yeah, in Deshaun Watson's career as a starter for the Texans, they've never uh, every game he's been in has been decided by one score or less. Yes. Um, so that's pretty crazy. So, um, so I mean, he's, he's a part of the answer, not the, the problem. Definitely. But I think Jacksonville takes it this okay. week. Josh? I hate London games. I, I do too. Really, really trash, do. trash. Um, you know, it's it's hard to say. I think that Houston 31. has the better offense. I think that Jacksonville has the better defense. You really went I, out on a limb there. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think that when you look at a game like this, you have really? to. Texans hot. just lost JJ Watt for the year. That's, yeah, I, I think that when you, so I think that when you look at a game like this, you have to. It's big travel, jet lag, a lot of factors coming in. You have to pick the defense on that. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go with Jacksonville. All right, uh, I'm going to take Houston. Um, I fair. agree with you in a lot of the cases. Um, obviously, one offense is better, one defense is better. Uh, going into Jacksonville or to London, excuse me. Um, Houston is making the smart decision, and they're flying their team out. Uh, yesterday they flew out. Which makes sense, get um, acclimated. Correct, uh, get used to the time difference. I think that the things Houston does well on offense offset what the, the things that the Jaguars do well on defense. I still have questions about the uh, Texans' offensive line, obviously. He did not get sacked this week, um, uh, Deshaun Watson, because the Raiders have no pass rush, and obviously Jacksonville does. But I think ultimately the ability of Deshaun Watson to keep his team in a game I will take Deshaun Watson late in a game, in a close game over Gardner Minshew at this point. I think it's a very, very close game, as indicated by the spread, Texans being two-point favorites. But I think the th- Texans, the things that they do well, are going to offset what the Jaguars do well. I just look at, I look at, uh, case in point, I look at uh, Houston versus Indianapolis. Sure. With the, with, the game on the, with the game on the line, and the defense stepped up and made a big interception with Deshaun Watson trying to force the ball down the field. I think that's another... 
that's another way that that could possibly shape. I also up. think the Colts are, um, you know, a certain team just match up really well with certain yeah, teams. No, I've said I, this for a while. The Colts are like their kryptonite. Yeah. For some reason, they game plan them very well. And this no. was before Frank Reich was a head coach. When they had Chuck Pagano, they always played the text T.Y. Hill and eats them alive. I don't think the Jaguars have those pieces to do that, but it is a close game. That's what, Yeah, for sure. All right. So you guys are taking the Jaguars. I'm taking Houston. Uh, next game, the Washington Redskins at the Buffalo Bills. Uh, Redskins lose again. Um, yep. The Buffalo Bills suffering a, um, a, big, a big loss. loss yeah. um, I was the only one here that picked them, the, the, be- the Eagles, to beat the Bills um, because I still am not that impressed with Josh Allen. He's completing less than 60% of his passes. He plays a very tough brand of quarterback, but he is not going to be able to win these games when his team goes down by two scores unless he's playing the Dolphins. When you play the better teams in the league, Josh Allen will hurt you. But thankfully for the Bills this week, they're not playing one of the better teams. They're playing <laughs> the Washington Redskins. Um, with that said, the 10-point spread is fair. I actually don't think they're going to cover it. I think um, Redskins will lose by probably about seven points, a touchdown. I think that they can play well enough, similar to the way Miami did, when they no one thought they'd cover, and they did. Yep. Um, but I'm going to take the Bills to win outright. Yeah, same thing. I have the Bills. I just think, that, again, the defense is better. Correct. This is one yep. of those the things. Defense, although um, they finally played a decent offense, and the defense well, took a huge step back. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you, I, I'm not even that, the fact that they took a step back. I think it was just Philadelphia, like, they just got out coached to me, and the other thing is that that defense is like they've relied on that defense solely to win a majority of their games. Mm-hmm. So at some point, no matter how, all good defenses, they're going to have times where they slip up. And I sure, think that sure. was a game where you know Smallwood, no, uh, what the hell is Miles, whatever the hell his name was, yeah, and um, Jordan Howard just, just they well, just. Ate. I, I also, I mean, you could say they could slip up, but it was the first decent offense they played. The Eagles' de- offense is the best they played all year. No, better again, than the Patriots' no, offense. No, I, I'm saying I'm not saying that. I'm saying that like this is a, this particular time that. You know, it's, it's like sometimes like you just I think lose they were it. Exposed. I don't think I don't think it was that they slipped up. I think they were exposed a little bit because they played a competent offensive coach, offensive team that could figure out better ways to beat them than you could with Ryan Fitzpatrick and fucking Jakeem Grant. Hmm. <laughs> you have Carson Wentz. You got Doug Peterson a little bit more. You have a better offensive line. So the Redskins don't have all that. So I'm still taking the Bills. Yep. Uh, yeah, Bills. Okay, that, that should have been an easy one. Uh, next game, the Tennessee Titans on the rise with Ryan Tannehill, a quarterback at the Carolina Panthers who took a beat down from the 49ers. Uh, Panthers are four-point favorites at home. Josh, your division. Um... <laughs> Titans um, played the Falcons. I know the Titans played the Falcons. They won, so that means that the the Panthers should beat them. Because fuck me, but I'm uh, I'm going to take the Titans in this one. Okay, uh, Taylor. I have the Carolina Panthers. Um, I think they're going to come out pissed off, and I really think again. I just this team is going to ride or die with Christian McCaffrey. He's that good. Yeah. And even in that San Francisco game, Christian McCaffrey had a bunch of plays. Yeah. Where he looked unstoppable. Sure. Um So it's just one of those. Again, listen. Tennessee does not have a Nick Bosa. They have Jarrell Casey, good yeah. player, but he's not yeah. Nick. Bosa. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, like I too am taking the Panthers, but I'm doing it very hesitantly. You're gritting your teeth. Um, yeah. What's the I, spread? Uh, it, uh, Carolina Panthers are four point favorites at home. Um, I think that the Titans match up with them pretty well. I think that now that the I think Kyle Allen's confidence has been shaken a little bit. I think that the 49ers did certain things to them that Tennessee can also do. They can be very physical at the line of scrimmage, especially with Taylor Lewan back. And obviously they have much. Last did, week. did he get? But is he out? Out? I don't I, know. I, I thought he I, just missed the rest of the game, and I thought he was I practicing. This I week. haven't seen him on the injury report, but I do okay. remember like he was out they, the rest of the but game. But the Titans are a much different offensive team. Their offensive identity is different with Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. So I think this will be a close game. But I'm going to take the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Uh, next game, the Chicago. Bears at the Philadelphia Eagles. The Bears suffering another loss from a kicker, but also more than the kicker, Matt Nagy did a terrible job late in that game. Yep. Not only not trying to get extra yards, but lining up on the wrong side of the hash for your kicker. Inexcusable. Not trusting your quarterback. Inexcusable. Not trying to run the ball when you're a running team. Inexcusable. Um, and the Eagles coming off that previously mentioned win over the Bills. Uh, Taylor. Especially with that Montgomery kid, like that rookie yeah, that running yeah. back they got who's been running his ass off all season. Uh, inexcusable for Matt yeah, Nagy. It's bad. It's, it's uh, so who are you taking around. in this one? Um, just be, uh, just because like they're riding high, coming off a big win off of Buffalo last week. I have Philadelphia, uh, Chicago, who I thought was going to be a serious contender in the NFC, has really just Mitch Trubisky is false. It's 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 officially. I think it's you, we could officially say he's false. Yeah, I, I I'm he, he's a, in I, that. I didn't think much of him last year, even though his numbers were good. You could see the scheming, and then when the second that they had to actually put the ball in his hands, he couldn't fucking do anything. Yeah, it's just one of those. I, I mean, I remember he was coming smoke out of, and mirrors, smoke and mirrors, quarterback. Would, he much was like Jared Goff. He was coming out of college, and they did that Gruden quarterback camp. And I think Gruden asked him such like Gruden like, likes like, every quarterback. Well, no, no, no. So he asked him like a very, very simple. 
simple quarterback question. I can't remember what it was, but it's like, 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 what does on two mean? Yeah. Or something like that. And he had no idea. Yeah. Granted, North Carolina's not a great offensive uh, pro- sure, college sure. program, but <coughs> Philadelphia, <coughs> Philadelphia is just a better team all around. I'd agree. Um, Josh. Uh, yeah, I'm taking the Eagles. Yeah, I'm taking the Eagles as well. That offense um, is trash. You man. know, I, someone was trying to tell me that the Eagles are contenders. I'm like, they're four and four, and the Cowboys are four and three. They, they last year they started out three and four, and they went to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. The year they went to the Super Bowl, they started out four and three, and they won the Super Bowl. So, it, and the NFC East, that division could be one at nine and seven. The Eagles, you know, the kind of win they just had over the Bills is kind of that identity um, identification uh, kind of game when you figure out your team identity. Yeah, and now you're playing a team that has playoff aspirations as well. Even though they aren't playing well right now, this is your chance to bury them, make a statement against a good defense, but not a great team. I definitely I'm think taking the Eagles. I definitely think you're right. I think that big win, like oh, listen, we're a run first team. Now. Yeah, we just have we, to we be. got it, and we played a decent defense, and mm-hmm. we we put up 31 points. Yeah, for sure. Um, next game, the Minnesota Vikings at the Kansas City Chiefs. The Vikings continuing to win. Kirk Cousins second in the league in quarterback rating uh, after being buried a few weeks ago, coming off that win over the Redskins on Thursday Night Football. Chiefs uh, playing the Packers way tougher than I expected them to with that um, more oh quarterback. God, yeah. Um, if Pat Mahomes was playing that game, they probably would have won the game. Yeah, I agree. Although the Packers game plan may have been a little bit different. If Pat Mahomes is there, they may have run the ball a little bit more. Uh, but they ran into Aaron Rodgers playing some of the best football of his career. Um, I'm going to take the Chiefs in this one. Um, and okay. that's, that's even if Mahomes isn't playing. Well, so I, is it like, do we know for sure if he's playing I think or not? he's going to play. Yeah. I, it sounds like they basically said that he would have played Sunday if it was a playoff game. And apparently yeah. they discovered that the ligaments in his knee, one is looser than the, most people, <laughs> one of the ligaments. <laughs> and that's what caused no structural damage. He's literally a freak of nature. No, I, I'm just saying that like it's looser. It, it's, it's really like your butt. Hang, hang um, like sleeve of yeah, lizard. Like a pink sock. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to take the Chiefs, um, even if Matt Moore is playing, because, again, while the Vikings have been playing well, it's not like they've been playing the world beaters of the NFL. Um, they played a really good game against the Lions. The Chiefs are better than the Lions. Um, in Kansas City, one of the toughest buildings to play on the road in. You're a team that needs to run the ball. And with that defense, it's really hard to get your offensive. Uh, in that building with your offensive line, it's very hard to do when it's that loud. Um, I think the Chiefs are going to be able to keep uh, Kirk Cousins on the sideline and force them, when they do come out, to have to run the ball and or, or throw the ball without having to set up the run game first because that's when they're most effective. When Dalvin Cook is going, you can run play action. I got the Chiefs winning by at least 10 in this game. By at least 10. Josh. Uh, okay, so a little bit of a backstory for why I'm making this pick. Last <laughs> week, um, Dak Prescott was on his bye week, so I had to uh, come up with some uh, little bit of a fantasy, fantasy maneuvering, maneuvering uh, with Matt Ryan being out. So both of my quarterbacks were out. So uh, I went and I looked at the players available list and who's there but a guy who threw 10 touchdowns to one interception in the Over span of a couple yeah, of weeks. Games. And that would be Kirk Cousins. So I pick up Kirk Cousins. I start him uh, in my fantasy and lineup. And he do? He did not throw any touchdown passes. <laughs> um, he had like 190 yards. He had like 190 yards. Got me a Against great the Redskins, whopping too. fucking 13 points. <laughs> Thanks, dude. Uh, so I'm it's picking the Kansas, sh- the Kansas City Kansas Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> I'm picking the Kansas City Chiefs because fuck you, Kirk Cousins. And I know that because I'm doing this, you're going to throw uh, probably Seven five touchdowns, touchdowns yeah. and no interceptions. And I just dropped you yep. because I don't need you because Dak is back. And you're a twat. And I am a cunt. Okay, fair. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Minnesota. Um, Minnesota. I think you've picked Minnesota this year more than any team. Yeah. I think you've only picked against them once. Yeah, I know. And look, they're 6-2. and two. You're welcome. Uh, so, no, I just think that Minnesota has the ability to really air it out, and I, the, my again, they didn't last week. When I say that Gosh. Kansas City's defense is suspect, I'm talking mostly about their secondary. I just don't trust it. Sometimes, sometimes you'll just have a good game, a good game sure, plan. Sure. I think that was a product of what happened last week against Green Bay. Yeah. Um, but I think that riding high still, um, Minnesota just has the ability to air it out. Like very few teams in this league have the ability to, especially. Uh, I don't know for sure if Thielen is back, but if Thielen is back, that's a big plus. Um, plus, again, like. Yeah, but Dalvin the entire Cook, airing Kyle out Rudolph. is based on the run game. It's well, proven. Well, they no, have the I, most I, passing yards based on run. Kirk Cousins' numbers are crazy. Off play action, um, I think he has uh, 12 touchdowns, no interceptions. Without play action, he's got like 13, three touchdowns, and all oh, the rest are interceptions. And yeah, his passer sure. rating's lower. So th- they they run the pass like most teams do, but more than any other team. And that's where my concerns are. On the road, to be able to run the ball the same way is very, very difficult. Well, here's the thing. If, if they end up establishing that run game, like I said, Dalvin Cook I is agree. a very, very good player, especially because it is an away game. You're going to take that Kansas City crowd out of it. It's Listen, it's a hard thing to do. I understand yeah, it's very that, hard to win that, in Kansas City. That, uh, me taking Minnesota is very much on the other side of it because mm-hmm. 
everything's going for Kansas City in this game. You know what I'm saying? Sure. But I just think Minnesota, there's something special about that team. You I don't think I mean? there's something special. I think there is. I think just because like they keep winning, they find ways to win, man. But um, what great team have they beaten so far? It doesn't matter. I know what great you, you team are what your record says you are. I agree. That's well, what I'm I, I want to see them win. against one of the better teams come well, up big because well, Kirk listen. Cousins still only has five wins against teams with 500 records in his career. Okay, but that's not his fault. He hasn't played a winning team yet. Mm, that's my. That's the point no, of what no, I mean, but, though. No, but no, I, I listen. I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah. What I'm saying is, is that it's not his fault that he hasn't played a team with a winning. Record yeah, yet. sure, sure. But I think that means or that you need has, to you know. need to estimate what he actually is based on sure. who he's playing. No, I'm not disagreeing. It's like again, the Cowboys started three and zero and look at them since. Right. No. And who do listen, they play? I get that. Right. Well, I say two back to back weeks. Green Bay, yeah, New Orleans. Exactly. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. But, no, so, I get that. But I, I would still take game. I mean, it's a one point spread. They're one point favorites. That was before Mahomes. If Mahomes is even announced as a starter. If Mahomes is playing, they're going to crush Minnesota. I, crush them. I would probably go on. I would probably say that, but I would still take, I'm sure. sure i take Minnesota. Okay. Uh, next game. I got to make up ground. I'm um, two games back. Yeah, I got a tie. The next game is the New York Jets at the Miami Dolphins. The Jets in disarray. The Dolphins come out hot again, c- crumble in the second half due to uh, just a <laughs> lack of defense, uh, a lack of talent in general. But again, playing better in the first half than the Jets play over four quarters. I say, like, I listened to 10 minutes of Mike the other day, and he opened up, and like, you know, the, uh, the, 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 the Miami Dolphins, like, they, they were up 14 0. They're like, well, what are we doing here? We're not trying to win. Yeah. <laughs> the all-out blitz, which uh, I my guess Dude, is, like that was that was such a Madden play. Oops. I, my figure was my idea was that he called all-out blitz, expecting a draw in that situation yeah. to try and get into field goal range. In that case, it's the I, right I call. And he, props he, to the Steelers for making an aggressive play call. Yes, I mean like you ju- you just caught Flores guess, uh, guessing. Yeah, that's but all. He's a rookie coach. Sure, whatever. Um, but with that said, it's my team. The Dolphins will beat the Jets this week. They I, will. The Jets are an upheaval. There's dysfunction in the locker room. Le'Veon Bell's unhappy. Jamal Adams is unhappy. Sam Darnold looks. Awful. Mm-hmm. Um, everything looks awful. They're down multiple offensive linemen. They don't have a pass rush. They just lost Leonard Williams. Uh, CJ Mosley's done for the year. They don't have anyone. I mean, they just got a, a Osemele, who's also going through probably litigation with that yep, uh, he's with medical sue them. staff. Um, I'm taking my team. I'm going to take them against. I don't blame it. you. They're, if they're going to win a game this year, it's going to be the Jets or the Bengals. I mean, listen, if there's a game they are going to win, it's this one. But yeah. it's like hard for like. I, Jets, I hate. Listen, does the Jets have ser- very little talent. Does anyone seriously have a quarter? Like, I will. Ser- I have to throw I, a coin no, for this I, one. No, I don't believe in coins. What does that even mean? They're not real. That's not true at all. What are you right. talking about? Guess a number. Okay. Uh, between one and two behind my back. Uh, I will guess one. Okay, you took the Dolphins. Okay. I actually had two, but you're taking the Dolphins because I said so. Josh. No, uh, in that case, no. I want the fucking Jets. Okay, Fuck take you. the Jets. Fuck you. Because I actually I said had three so. up. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, which three did you have? Uh, the Trey. <laughs> <laughs> Trey it up, baby. Deep cut for you guys. Josh. Uh, Dolphins. Dolphins. Yeah, um, I think that Adam Gaze has completely lost the locker room. There's even more and more reports about like this pure dysfunction. Did you see that uh, Christopher Johnson was shit talking Adam Gaze to fans outside it, of the it game? It wasn't even really that bad. Oh, it was, it was bad. Uh, no, I, I mean, hope well, you show up this week. If that's, that's not if, good on your coach from the owner. No, listen, I understand. And listen, uh, I hate Adam Gaze more than any other person on this planet for some reason. I just think he's a scumbag. I really do. He's a mental case. I, I, I really just can't the stand eyes. the guy. Like, I, like, the part of me truly feels bad because my best friend in the world is a Jets fan. And I, and I truly <laughs> I saw, feel bad I saw about a great it. tweet. Um, if you have an elite quarterback, an elite running back, Elite wide receivers and elite offensive line. Adam Great Gaze is a great play caller. <laughs> like, <laughs> who isn't? Ridiculous. All right, uh, next game. This is actually a pretty good one. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, Colts coming off their bye week. No. Uh, uh, who'd they play? The, the Colts. Broncos. Oh, that's and right. They, and that's and right. Vinatieri, after missing two field goals and an extra point, he hits a 52 yarder. Ah, oh, my God. That was nice. Um, and the, the Steelers coming off the win over the Dolphins. Josh. Uh, Colts. Colts. Yeah, um, I'm taking the Colts too. Same. Yeah, I think. Uh, I, listen, Pitts. Listen, what's his name? Uh, Rudolph has it again. That's fine. Russo. Uh, uh, Russo. Jesus. Uh, Rusev. Rusev. <laughs> <laughs> Rudolph has played well. Honestly, yes, he has. I like as best you can for a backup with little to no experience in the NFL. Yeah. Truthfully, um, but it's I, I don't I don't like that. Outside of John John Connor. What's his James name? Connor. James Connor. John Connor. Connor. <laughs> from, from Terminator. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> um, machine is to protect you. Like, like Juju's had a really bad year. I think even if... Um, Deontay Johnson, now is killing it. Yeah. The rookie wide receiver. He's playing really well. If you need a wide receiver, you just go to Pittsburgh because they always... They mm. just pump out receiver after receiver. Then the receiver leaves and just shit happens. Well, I'll tell you what happened, bro. I found on the why on a limb. I picked up that Slayton kid from uh, from the Giants. Giants, yeah. Darius Slayton. Thank God. Yeah. Uh, but for this game, it just the cold 
Colts are a better team. And listen, Jacoby Brissett just had a bad game and honestly got very lucky because Von Miller had him dead to rights mm-hmm. in the end zone last away. week and he got away. Yeah. Uh, Jacoby Brissett is really surprising a lot of people in this yeah, league. He's playing he's great. A, he can be a starter. With, yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously he can be. I mean, also, I mean, like, you got Frank Reich. That helps a lot. But, but at the end of the day, off. Dude, they're five and two. Yeah, they're, they're killing it. Coming off Andrew Luck retiring, that's yep. a big deal to me. So um, uh, yeah, I got the Colts this all week. All right, next game: the Detroit Lions at the Oakland Raiders. The Raiders are uh, two point favorites at home. Two, the Raiders are two point favorites at home. Yeah, I got the Lions. Um, the, I think the Lions again, just another case of them being just a better team. Yep. Now. The only thing they have on offense is this tight end Darren Waller, who's annoying the shit who out of Who on the me. Raiders? Yes. Well, they also have a really good rookie running back who might be the offensive rookie of the year. Josh Jacobs having a good year. He's having a great year. He's, he's having a very top good year. Five running back right now. Yeah, he's very good. Yeah, he's. He, but like, but like I said, the real story is that kid is that yeah. tight end Darren Waller. But um, again, I just think Detroit. I think Detroit is just a better team. Okay. And I like them better. Josh. Uh, yeah, same the same yeah, thing. I'm here. also taking the Lions. Uh, the Raiders. The th- this is, is the kind crazy. of game the Raiders probably. Will Galladay. end up winning ultimately because they've they they played really well last week. They probably should have beaten the Texans, but they have no defense. Um, the Lions are the most aggressive offense in the league when it comes to taking shots downfield. Matthew Stafford is the most aggressive quarterback in the league right now. I think that in a game like that, I'll take Matthew Stafford over Derek Carr. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, the next game, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Seattle Seahawks. I think we're all going to take the Seahawks here. Yep. Seahawks What's are six the, and a half point favorites. I'll, I'll even take the spread on that. Yeah, I will too in Seattle. Um, so yeah, no big deal there. Uh, we're all taking the Seahawks, right? Yep. Don't need to spend too much time. Uh, next game, the Cleveland Browns at the Denver Broncos. The Bro- Browns are three point favorites. Um, you will have a, a quarterback no one ever heard of starting, and Brandon Allen for the Broncos. Um, after Joe Flacco herniated the disc in his neck out five to six weeks, after he called out Vic Fangio rightfully for his lackluster play calling and um, not being aggressive when it came to going forward on fourth down or uh, taking shots and that, you know, not that Flacco has been good at all, but he is right in saying that, what are we doing? How can you expect a quarterback to get in any sort of rhythm if you're handcuffing him in general? Yep. Um, with that said, Taylor, this is your team. Uh, who are you taking? Uh, let's see. The Broncos stink. John Elway hates all good quarterbacks. Uh, we have a, we have Did you a see what Mark Slaret said about Elway today. No, he was talking about Elway has too much pride in his draft picks. And he implied that he is forcing Vic Fangio to keep Garrett Bowles in the lineup. Now I listen. Garrett Bowles is trash. It's, it's he doesn't. Known he wants to point. prove that his draft pick was Dude, good. It's known at this point how bad he is. Um, they, Drew Locke was actually was actually like he was questioned by the media um, outside of his locker, and he goes, "You know, a lot of people want to see you starting, and you just saw like he's a kid. He's twenty two years yeah. old. Mm-hmm. Really, the fan base wants him to start, and he cracks a smile. That alone made me happy. And the fact that like I wouldn't start him this year though, not behind that line. And it, no, you take it, the risk listen, of breaking him. No, that's what I'm saying. You you run the risk of really ruining his career before it even starts. Yeah. Um, um, but like you see the fire in that kid's eyes, and the, he he has every right to go out and say some say some shit about the, the offensive play calling, sure. why he's getting no reps in practice, why his thumb injury is a ghost injury. He's been good for two weeks now. Um, but listen, it's getting to a point, and I, I tweeted it a couple days ago. The it, the franchise is at a point where it's get. I'm almost. Ready to say get Elway out of here because well, that's I what think said too. I, He's I, like, I, I if think, not for Peyton Manning, then dude, John Elway would have been fired two, three years ago. I think it's run its course. Yes, we, he got us the two Super Bowls. Yes, uh, we got one we got them. one Super Bowl, and yes, there wouldn't be any Super Bowls in Denver without John Elway. That is a fact. Sure, absolutely. But as an executive. The last three years speak for themselves. I mean, you guys fired Mike Shanahan, who won you two Super Bowls, too. Listen, it it happens. It's it's what happens. It happens. And even when. That's the danger with hiring your best players as executives. Even when we were looking for a coach. And I think it was right after they fired John Fox. Yeah. Um, the 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 rumor was they wanted he wanted to bring Shanahan back in, and everyone would have said that would have been a tremendous mistake. I because the zone because the zone running scheme doesn't really work well in today's yeah. NFL. Gary Kubiak's the only now, guy that can make it work anymore. Correct. So. That being said, playing the Cleveland Browns, yeah, the Browns stink as well, but that roster is just too damn good. And with the pass rush being as and good as it is, Miles Garrett alone, yeah. and even Olivier Vernon could have a sack or two here. Honestly, yeah. it doesn't then, it doesn't matter what happens. Just, you know, even if the Browns play their normal this season Browns game, they Listen, have too much talent. They'll you, beat the Broncos. You, you're, you're playing. You're playing. Uh, I don't even know who this kid is. I'm being very honest. Brandon I have Allen. no idea who it is. Yeah. Um, you he's know, your third string technically. I, I guess. You no, know, he is. No, yeah. he's, no, he's been second string because John yeah, H. Drew Lock, man. 
It's so stupid. Um, but well, listen, he drafted him. I don't know why he hates him. He hated Paxton Lynch too. I, or just he's just really bad at evaluating quarterbacks, which I, seems to be the answer. I think it's a mix of both because I mean, he, listen, even people like people in Denver. Maybe that's why I'm a Denver fan. We're like people. Denver fans are very hard headed. Like it goes back to when Cutler said he has a stronger arm than Elway gets traded a week later. You know what I'm saying? Like well, it's that's just one the of those problem things. when it's like it's, when just it's someone weird, that's it's very emotional. Well, yeah, decisions. and it's very hard for guys that were as great as John Elway. You know, the great players Arguably in any a top sport. Five quarterback they ever played a game. The great players in any sport tend to make really bad coaches and talent evaluators because the game came so easily to them, mm-hmm. and they didn't have to work at all the little things, the mechanics and things like that. When you had an arm like John Elway and the athleticism like John Elway, you don't have to see the same things that a player that like I Drew mean, Locke who needs to work harder to get there. He's not as talented. I mean, you're also talking about a guy that like if he didn't, if he didn't, Baltimore did not trade him. He was going to go play right field for New York Yankees. Yeah, like the the the, the guy was otherworldly talented, but. Against the Cleveland Browns, against that defense, with this. So you're t- taking the Browns. I'm taking the Browns with this terrible quarterback yeah. and this terrible play calling. A terrible like, head it's coach. Terrible head. He's coach. making you miss Vance Joseph. No, not at all. Well, Vance Joseph is that you know I don't know if Vic Fangio is going to get the six wins this year like Vance Joseph did last year with a very similar roster. Listen, he, here here's the difference. Fangio, at least to me. Uh, it, it seems like he's like, like he's just there. You know what I'm saying? Like, whereas, well, no shit. No, I'm saying whereas it seems Van- like that's all he's doing. Whereas Vance Joseph just constantly was saying, "We should be we, we, every single press conference. Great week of practice. Great week of practice. Yeah. It doesn't mean shit if you fucking lose, man." I think Fangio is a dinosaur in today's NFL, and that's he the is. problem. And, he is. Um, I thought that they would be a much more aggressive team when it came to running the ball, and they're not even doing that. Um, they, they just refuse to feed Philip Lindsay. Royce they don't Freeman. like Philip Lindsay. I don't get it, dude. The guy, dude, he. He went to the Pro Bowl as an undrafted rookie, the first one ever. And it doesn't make any sense why they won't feed him the ball. He's born in Denver. He played high school football in Denver. Went to the University of Colorado. My and guess, he, honestly, knowing Vic Fangio, he's not physical enough. They want a more physical, more he's a better. Runner. He's a better between the tackles runner than Royce Freeman they is. Wanna, that doesn't make a, any they sense. They want a guy more that's going to be a north-south physical runner, not a speed guy. That's my my guess based on knowing who Vic Fangio I, is. Listen, I understand that. But if you watch the tape, yeah, he bounces outside. But he's such a strong but runner between the, the tackles. Man. Guys like Vic Fangio, who's been in the NFL for so long, He's they such don't, an old they don't, school. I they get don't it. look at tape. They look at, you know, what are the physical attributes? I know. It's disgusting. All right. Uh, Josh? Uh, yeah, the Browns. Okay. Uh, sorry, next I game, didn't mean to totally like, hijack game, that The Green one, Bay sorry. Packers at the Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, Packers beating the Chiefs. 7-1, man. Chargers should have lost to the Bears. Yes, um, By all accounts, fired their offensive coordinator, Ken Wisenhunt. Um, uh, for me, this is easy. Even on the road, um, Packers, three-point favorites on the road. I'm taking the Packers. They're one of the best teams in the NFL. Uh, Matt LaFleur seems to have figured out the Aaron Rodgers code to make him play consistently, turn him into a good pocket passer oh. again. Um, oh, who beef? That's me again. Yeah, dude, I'm just leaking. Dude, you're just leaking methane yeah, everywhere. It's, it's my yeah. ass. Um, so I'm taking the Packers. Uh, Packers as well. Packers to cover. Packers all the way. Chargers stink. Taking the Packers. Oh, sorry, wait, I thought you said what did you, you say? Take, Chargers no. stink. Taking the Packers. Oh, oh, okay. Um, next game. This is the game of the week for me. Is it? Uh, the New England Patriots at the Baltimore Ravens. Yes. Undefeated Patriots. Uh, defense continuing to shine. Uh, Ravens coming off their bye week. Um, Josh. Um. Every time that the Patriots are undefeated and they play the Ravens, the Ravens play them hard. Yeah. Um, I don't see. I don't see Lamar Jackson beating that defense though. Yeah. Okay. So you're taking the Patriots. Yeah. I actually I, I agree. I think Lamar Jackson is on the cusp of being a special player. Um, it's just that. New England's defense is on a historic level that like it's like it's hard to compare to like the 85 Bears or what you said like the 1920 sure. New York whatever Buffalo, the, the it's the Buffalo All-Americans the Buffalo All-Americans which I didn't even know it was a fucking football team who at that point uh going into last week had a plus 210 point differential which is ridiculous so uh that alone um I listen I think Lamar Jackson is going to get his shit done he's going to get he's going to get some he's going to have some good offensive plays but it's just that New England defense is too good. It's just it's New England. Now, what's the point spread? Three and a half? Uh, three and a half on the road for the Patriots. They're favored. I probably wouldn't take that spread because I think it's going to go down to a field goal. So you had half a point would totally screw you, dude. Okay. So um, that means, Bob, take three and a half, dude. Do it. Okay. So I am taking the Baltimore Ravens. And I don't I'm going to I'm going to tell you specifically why. The Patriots defense has been great this year. I want you to hear who they've beaten on the way to their 8-0 record. They beat the Steelers after injuring uh, Ro- Ro- Ben Rod- Roethlisberger. Rod- like what, the first quarter? Yes, correct. So they won 33-3. They beat the Dolphins 43-3, and uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick, and then he was benched in the game, and Josh Rosen came in. They beat the Jets without Sam Darnold, 
And by the way, they all their uh, most of their points were off defense that week. They only put up uh, ten offensive points. Was that two pick sixes and a return point? Correct. That was ridiculous. Um, they beat the Bills sixteen ten. Josh Allen still... got injured in the game. If yeah. you don't remember, they beat the Redskins. They beat the Giants. And that was a close game as well until the second half, even though it was thirty five fourteen. It was. I then they the beat over. then they beat the Jets again. Then they beat the Browns. Of all those teams, comparing them to the Ravens, what team has the best quarterback? Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, correct? No, no wait, 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 wait. What which team that the Patriots have played compared to the Ravens has the best quarterback? Uh, Baker Mayfield. Lamar Jackson is significantly better than no, Baker Mayfield. I may. I, I know no, what I'm wait, saying. No, like, which I, I quarterback may, would you take of all those teams, maybe, including the Ravens? Oh, including the Ravens. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then Lamar Jackson. The Ravens. Yes. And I'm not trying to take anything away from the Patriots because they've been unbelievable this season. Uh, as someone that hates them the most, I probably hyped their defense more than anyone this year. You did. But this is the first significantly good team they're playing all year. It's yeah. the only team with a winning record they have played no, so far this year. It's definitely a big test. It is also the only MVP candidate they are playing this, so far this year. They're going. On the road, and as Josh said, the Ravens, even if they're undefeated, they always play the Patriots tough. They always have. Harbaugh has always game planned incredibly well for Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. He's always played them very, very well in New England. And now this one is in Baltimore, coming off their bye week, motivated to make a point against the Patriots, a Patriots team that's offense still isn't fully clicking, that hasn't played a significantly good defense. The Ravens defense has one more week with Marcus Peters, who has picked off Tom Brady, I believe, three times in his career, for one of them for a pick six. I'm going out on a limb, and I'm taking the ball. Baltimore Ravens to put the take away the O from the Patriots could happen when I look happen. at the variables about who they've played and how great their defense has been and all these takeaways you have to look at who they've played Ryan Fitzpatrick's a turnover machine Luke Falk is Luke Falk yeah but he's trash yeah but you've said it yourself you are what your record you are says what you are. I'm not taking anything away from their record I'm taking I'm what I'm doing is I'm accounting for where how they got here you have to look at how they got here how the Ravens got here and what team what offense has been more impressive what defense has well, been more impressive the Patriots it's, defense has obviously been more impressive. They're better coached, but that's you know not a well, slight against no, Harbaugh. No, I understand what you're saying, but I think it's also a very it's a very very it's interesting a, thing to point out. Great chess match that game. The strength of schedule always favors the it Patriots. Always favors always. the Patriots, and, no matter what. And they always they have take the advantage easiest, of it. They have the easy schedule now. I. Believe in conspiracies all you want. It doesn't matter no, to it, me. It's it's not. It, it can't it's be a the, conspiracy. Listen, it's it's a it's a preset thing. Listen, who you play? It's the National Football League, and I listen. I have no problem saying everyone in this room and the majority of people, everyone else in the NFL outside of New England, hates the Patriots. Sure. Um, but it, there comes a point in time where listen, Denver did it in the AFC title game. I mean, granted, Peyton Manning did it twice. Indianapolis has done it. Other teams have beaten the Patriots in it's the playoffs. Been done before. It's been done before. And now we're talking you regular have, season listen, against another very good team. You have to be better. This will be the the toughest. Patriots should want to push you. The, the, the games that the Patriots will lose this year, because they're not going undefeated, no, it's going to no be shot. this game or the Texans that beat them, because the Texans will play them very well also. But I'm taking, uh, I'm the only one taking the Ravens. You're Fair taking enough. the Patriots. Yes. Um, and the final game of the week is the Monday night game between the Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants it's at, actually, at MetLife Stadium. It's actually uh, a good game. Cowboys, seven-point favorites on the road, and I think they're going to win by 20. You think, Cowboys, you think they're going to win that big? I think they're going to demolish the Giants. I don't know about demolishing because it's one of those things where, like, no matter how bad these teams are, specifically in the NFC East, they always play they each other well. They play each other tough. I'll you know, that. And listen, and the Cowboys do this thing. I'm sorry, Justin, but they do this thing where they play down to they, the competition they always, a lot. They, that they is do fair. that a lot. So I think this this has the ability to be a trap game, even though at 4-3, and three, how can it really be a trap game? Yeah. But at the same time, the, the Giants key, have been getting listen, burned by big plays the, on defense all year. The key to success in this game is not Amari Cooper, is not anyone else, is not Jason Witten right there. It's Ezekiel Elliott. Feed he has Zeke. 24, since he came into the league, he's had 24 100-yard rushing games. Feed him. And you know how many times the, the Dallas has won those games? Um, I, th- I want to say like 20 times. I, th- I think they're like 20 and 1 in they're those games. Ridic- some crazy ridiculous. statistics. Ridiculous. Ezekiel Elliott. Is the key Feed to that offense? Zeke. Just give it to him, and you will possibility win by twenty. But if you, if you win by three, you get out of MetLife. Whatever, it doesn't matter. But I have the Cowboys winning this week. I think regardless, they cover most Monday night games have been covered, seven so. points. They could cover for sure. I, I would buy that. Josh, Cowboys. Cowboys. All right, so we're all so, in agreement there. We actually have a lot of different picks this week, which is nice. Yeah. Um, we have one, two, three. Actually, we have a bunch where we pick the same. So I, I decided that this is the last week I actually want to do this. I have one teaser I want to okay, do this please. week. Okay, um, please. So as far as I've been doing parlays the majority of the season, that, has, that hasn't that has been working all that well. So I've decided to up my ante and actually go with teasers. Um, so what the teaser does is that it adds six points to the line. Do a flip. Six, 
<laughs> finish it. Finish no, it. No, I can't. <laughs> so it adds uh, six, I six and a half or seven points to the line. Now I'm actually having problems opening up my fucking app. But essentially, I'll, I'll just post the picks later. This is terrible. Yeah, we'll now just, my shit's just not tweet even them, working. And then I'll it's retweet terrible. them. All right, guys. This is episode 75 of You I'm Watch, so I Listen. Um, you got our NFL picks. Uh, it's it's very close between us, and I'm confident Ooh. that I will not lose. Ooh, I got it. I got it. I'm right. sorry. Oh, I go ahead. Sorry. It. Sorry. So this is still I have, episode 75. Still episode 75. So, again, this is with the, this is with the six-point teaser. Um, I have the Seattle Seahawks at plus zero. So what that means, that's a bad to pick them. I have Seattle winning. I have San Francisco minus four. I have Carolina plus two. New England plus two and a half. And I have Green Bay plus two and a half. Again, it's a five-team teaser. I happen to throw $300 down. So I'm looking and to if win. if you tweet Taylor first, he will throw down 500 for you. That's not true. Oh, that's not sorry. true. Sorry, Josh will. Yeah, Josh. Okay. Nope. I, Josh fair. will send you a McDonald's gift card. Nope. He will use it himself. Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely <laughs> okay. use it himself. So this was episode 75 now of You Watch, not. I Listen. Yes. Um, we will see you guys next week. Bye, Taylor. Bye, Later. Josh. Bye, Dan. Bye, everyone. Peace.